from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Today we're going to be considering some very serious things. One of them being, is a world dictator about to appear? Another will be, can Putin in 2009 return to Russia as the president? And how can it happen? And in the next four years, world leaders predict a Mideast war. But before we get to those headlines and global headlines, I want to just look back just a little bit and say that one of our presidents was in Germany. You're going to remember this. It was President Kennedy. And when he was there, he said, Ich bin in Berliner. He wanted them to know that he felt like he belonged right there in Berlin. Well, recently our president-elect was there. And take a look at what he had to say. It's quite, quite interesting. <laughs> there he is in the door, and he's saying, Ich bin in Berliner, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wanted them to feel like he was a part of them also. And then we had another president, of course. Our President Clinton went around the world. He knows so many, many leaders around the world. And Jack heard uh, something that I thought was a, a little bit comical. And uh, I'm glad he didn't say what you're going to I, say I didn't right hear now. it. I created you it. You created yeah. it. Okay. Obama said, Ich bin ein Berliner, like Kennedy. And Clinton, if he had gone to Frankfurt, Germany, would have said, Ich bin ein Frankfurter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and Bush might have said, had he gone to Hamburg, Ich bin ein Hamburger. <laughs> but Ich bin von Belgien. I am from Belgium heritage. And, you know, there's a place called Brussels, and my parents came from that area. So, ich bin ein Brussels Sprout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like to have fun, Rexella. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> you know why? Because a merry heart doth good like a medicine, Proverbs 17, 22. Yahweh, God, sits in the heavens, our God, and laughs. Psalm 2, verse 4, probably at the atheists and the evolutionists. And finally, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4 says, there is a time to laugh. And I love to have good times. And both people send me jokes from all over now. They certainly <laughs> do, Jack. They certainly do. Well, the world leaders are gathered together, as you well know. And uh, they have a very unique opportunity to create a global society. And let's take a look at some global headlines right now. Very, very important. First of all, this just came in, and I wanted to put it right up front. Barack Obama is warned to beware of a huge threat from Al-Qaeda. Can I Al stop right there, Rexella? Yes, you may, it. I'll Jack. tell you why. When Bill Clinton came in the office, within a few months after his inauguration, we had that bombing there where we finally had the Twin Towers destroyed. He was the first to experience that. When Bush came in, a few months after his inauguration, we had 9-11, the dissipation, dissolution of the Twin Towers, and so many died. And now Al-Qaeda wants to kill this president. You need to pray for him. He's on dangerous ground. And they said it's because he has apostatized from the Muslim faith, which he hasn't, but his father was Muslim. But now they've got that against him, and according to their theology, he must die. It's going to be a horrendous time for this man. He's facing so many obstacles. Was I shocked as I heard it last night on Fox News, and I said, I'm going to get that article and Start the program with it. Yes, yes, very, very important. Do keep all of those in authority in your prayers. Well, let's go back to the meeting of so many, many world leaders. And what's their goal? UK's Brown, of course, from England, says now's the time to build a global society. Global. Keep that in your mind always. Again, world asked to help craft online charter for religious harmony. Uh, there again, you notice the first word, world. World religion. World and global, yes. 
Let's take a look at Russia. It was self-defense. Of course, they're talking about the recent, uh, the recent uh, war that they had. And Libya also wants to get in on what we're talking about. Libyan leader hopes to boost energy ties with Russia. They're getting closer to Russia. Russia is very, very important in the days ahead, friends. I'm going to point that out in a moment. Once again, a Europe eager for change is ready to embrace Obama. They all seem to love him. 200,000 people showed up there in Berlin when he gave his speech to them. And on the cover of U.S. News and World Report, take a look, promises to keep Barack Obama inherits two wars, a collapsing economy, a country anxious for change, and he isn't even president yet. Where does he start? And why the next U.S. president will be a wartime leader? Now, it's almost a guarantee that he will be in office. And this article has to do with something that they anticipate him to be in office and to direct Arab-Israeli war is a near certainty in the next four years. That's what this article is all about. I'm going to back up. Perhaps on your mind right now is a very important word, something that's happening out there among global leaders. UK's Brown says that now's the time to build a global society. Have you not heard Jack Van Nippy say this? Oh, oh Jack. Because that is the seventh empire in history. In Revelation 17, 10, it says there will only be seven, and number seven is the revived Roman Empire or the European Union. And the quote from Brown is one of the EU quotes as an EU nation. And the Bible teaches in Revelation 13, verse 1, that a leader is going to rise out of that Mediterranean area, and he's going to control all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations. Oh, a double -L, world government. And here is Sarkozy, who wants to head up the European Union, is the next president. He's in for a six-month term now, but later you'll see in the program he wants to serve for the full five years to strengthen the movements of the European Union. And he said, we are hoping to create the new world order through the present economic catastrophe. And that's why they've all run over here to meet with Bush about the economy. And that's what... Obama has to face, as Rexella also read. And that, of course, is Revelation chapter 18, verses 10, 17, and 19. Oh, Jack, it's in the Bible. Yes. It's in the Bible. Well, he quotes yes. the Bible all the time to us, mm -hmm. and that's why he can anticipate what's coming. Well, something else have you noticed uh, from the headline? The Libyan leader just went to Russia. And he wants to get closer to the Soviet Union, or what used to be the Soviet Union, Soviet Russia is what they're calling it now. And he wants to boost energy cooperation. They're getting closer, Jack. Oh, in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, we have the war with Russia under the title of verses 1 and 2, Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh, all cities in Russia presently. But who joins with them? Many. But verse 5 Libya. The groundwork is now being laid. And President Putin is coming back. He was prime minister presently, but he used Medvedev as a puppet. And we're going to let you know that a vote has just been taken by the lawmakers of Russia to bring him back by 2009. And it's the war of the latter years and latter days, Rexella. Give us yes. that thing about Israel again. Yes, well, this is very, very important. The Arab-Israeli war is almost a certainty within the next four years, according to the article that we just read for you, uh, why the next U.S. president will be a wartime leader, Jack. They're anticipating yeah. it. Now, I have said that I believe President-elect Obama will probably, if he serves eight years, be the president during Armageddon of Revelation 16, 16. Oh, that's a bold statement. No, it isn't. Why? When you study Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, Russia and an Arab alliance makes the first move against them, and Israel is the battlefield mentioned 18 different times. I could give all the numbers, but I won't right now. But hear me, folks. This thing could just be between the Palestinians, Hamas, and Israel. And that wouldn't be it yet. But once Russia gets to move toward that area, and they have the Shanghai Cooperation Organization now with China to work together, and that'll be the second wave that moves in. It's all against Israel because they want to fulfill 
And this is the last thing that happens before Jesus returns. Psalm 83, 4, let us cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. And remember, there was no Israel for 2,534 years until your day, your generation. And they became a nation called Israel in May 14th. 1948. So this is Latter-day Prophecy. Jesus is about to return. There may be a limited war, but when the big thing happens, that's Armageddon. That's where they move. The Middle East. Oh, Armageddon. Aren't you happy that Jesus said, if I go away, I'm coming back. When he comes back, he's going to stop Armageddon. I'm so grateful for that wonderful, wonderful promise that he has given to us. What a great, wonderful Lord we have. And now, let me just say, I am so happy for our Opera of the Week. It is the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Take a look at everything that's in there. It's terrific. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanapy Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanapy Ministries. Dr. Vanapy has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanapy Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanapy used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of Scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapy, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. All those books in here. Now, I really want to encourage you to get your call in immediately. They're flying out of here for Christmas. I'll put it in a nice gift box. You can give it for Christmas or for any occasion. Jack, this is a masterpiece. You know, the three books that are in here originally cost $60. You can get that and the Bible with the 10,385 coded verses. I read 11,000 volumes. I've got 100,000 hours of study in the Bible, 11 years of 24-hour days, and you can get it all just by ordering this, and it's for $59, $120 value for $59. Woo! That's a great, great, great thing. Now, let me just remind you of an important date. Call by December 14th for your Christmas delivery here in the United States. Please make that call, and make it right away, the 800 number, or write to us. Now, let me just say, friends, that we are all so focused, aren't we, on the economy crisis. Oh, what a global financial crisis. And especially, you know, in the area of Detroit, the automakers. I am going to back up to something, though. Have you ever heard of the four horsemen of the apocalypse in the book of Revelation? Are the crises on many, many fronts, the war, the economy, and the famine, and all the rest, can it really be found in the four horsemen of the apocalypse? We're going to break it down for you in just a moment and see if the headlines are here in the book of Revelation, the four horsemen. Let's look very, very closely at this first headline, please, from the Detroit News. Big three CEOs plead for aid. And we all remember how they went before Congress and did this. Once again, Obama, McCain agree on change for Washington global push to beat economic downturn. Now that word global extends around the world, doesn't it, friends? Let's go to Europe. Europe tips into recession. Recession. And then automakers in Europe seek aid as sales slump there too. World leaders gather as Eurozone economies shrink. And then world leaders to begin financial reform talks. Once again, summit G20 nations grapple with global crisis and EU holds financial reform summit. And another summit held where? In Lisbon. Jack will tell us what that was all about. But first, I'd like for you to see something on the screen. Henry Spock was one of the founders of the European community, now the European Union. This is what he had to say way back then. We do not want another committee. We have too many already. What we want is a man, 
a man of sufficient stature to hold the allegiance of all people and to lift us out of the economic morass in which we are sinking. Send us such a man, be God or the devil, we will receive him. What a statement. What a statement. I want to ask Jack, you know the four horsemen we had up here? That first one is a white horse horse, Jack. Tell us exactly what that is. Well, it represents the final world government of Revelation 17.10, the revived Roman Empire, which today is called the European Union. And a leader comes out of that European Union. Now, let me shock you. Satan is a deceiver and he tries to imitate what Christ will do or has done. First of all, when Christ returns in Revelation 19.11, he appears on a white horse. Well, this Antichrist, and it can not only mean against, but the substitute for Christ, comes on that white horse because he is setting himself up, as you're going to see in a few minutes, as God. Spock said, be God or the devil will receive him. Well, here is the devil incarnate in a human being called the Antichrist, and so he comes on a white horse to imitate Christ coming later. All right, I'm going to ask a couple of questions here together. Will the Antichrist be able, because he thinks he's God, will he be able to create a peace contract that will hold? And will he be able to control the world, Jack? Well, yes, he is going to call himself God because Christ is God. Romans 9, 5, Christ came who is over all God, blessed forever. 1 Timothy 3, 16, great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in the flesh. He said, well, I'm also going to be God. And in Daniel eleven thirty six, this world dictator proclaims himself as deity. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that's called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, which is going to be erected soon saying, I am God. What an arrogant pup. Now, will he create the peace? Yes. You know why they're listening to him? Because when this battle takes place in the Middle East, recorded in Daniel 11, verses 40 to 45, this world dictator comes to his end. But in Revelation 12, 3, his deadly wound is healed. He said, Christ was resurrected. I'm going to be resurrected. And the whole world worships him if their names are not written in the book of life. The real believers. And that's Revelation 13, verse 8. They say, let's believe him. Does he make the peace? Daniel 9, 26. He is of the people who destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. Vespasian and Titus' his son, Roman generals, and this revived Roman Empire leader is going to make the peace. It will last for seven years, but it is broken by Russia, which we're going to deal with in the next point. Now, let me say that he controls the whole world. He certainly does, because this king of fierce continents, Daniel 8.23, devours the whole world, Daniel 7.23. I said this earlier, when he arises out of the Mediterranean area, Revelation 13.1, he controls all kindreds peoples, tongues, and nations. No doubt about it. But Rexella, the rider on the second horse, which is red, is red Russia, as we call it. And we're going to deal with that in a few moments. But to conserve time, we'll talk right now about the rider on the black horse. It's the economy that has been shattered worldwide. And that's why we can have a European Union controlling the finances of the world, overseeing everything. Do you know the angel there? on that third horse is crying out, a measure of wheat for a penny, a measure of wheat for a penny. A measure was 16 ounces of bread. A penny was a day's wages. That's how bad it could become. And James chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 says, Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Why the weeping and howling? because they've laid up treasure for the last days and now it's suddenly disappeared. Just like what's happening in the world right now, just not in America, but globally. Now watch this in Revelation 18. Here's what happens through the European Union, all the world, and the rider on the third horse, which is black, producing famine and devastating economy. 
Revelation 18, 10, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Verse 17, for one hour, so great riches has come to naught to nothing. Verse 19, in one hour is she made desolate. We know how it can all happen overnight now. And I believe we're in the final hours before Jesus returns in the clouds of glory to call us home in the twinkle of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, when he shouts, come up hither, Revelation 4, 1. And then he returns to this earth with those who were raptured seven years later. Uh, Let's move I on. I love that, Excel. Jack. I love that, Jack. Well, he referred to Russia as being uh, the one that re would represent the red horse. All right, let's take a look. Now, friends, you see there, Russia. Very, very important. Uh, Jack has dealt with horse number one and number three, the white and the black horse. We're going to deal now with the red and the pale horse. And Russia certainly is connected with the red horse. All right. On this first uh, headline, I think you'll recognize Medvedev submits law on extending president's term, and it has to do with bringing back this man you're going to see right now. And that is Putin. He wants to come back lord and master as the president of Russia in 2009. And Russian MPs back presidency move. we got to go quickly here. U.S. critical of Russia's Baltic missile threats. Woo, are they ever forceful about that? Belarus president seeks to deploy Russian missiles. U.S. frustrated by Russian stance on missile defense. We can't understand why they're doing this. And the EU voices strong concern over Russian missiles. The EU is with us on this. Sarkozy urges U.S. Russia to delay missile plans. And Sarkozy wants new EU-U.S.-Russia security accord. Now, certainly... Russia fits in to that red horse, doesn't she? Jack, can you combine those two last horses, please? A few moments ago, at the beginning of the program, we said that Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 had to do with Russia, and I explained chapter 38 verses 1, 2 as being Russia, no doubt about it, and then it would be the war of the latter years and the latter days, verses 8 and 16. But now here is the defeat of Russia in Ezekiel 39, verses 1 and 2. Behold, I'm against the Ogog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. I'll turn you back and leave but the sixth part of thee. Five, six of their armies are going to fall. It's going to take seven months to bury them, and that's verse 12, and that's a 24-hour day proposition, verse 13. Now, they are really angry because we are talking about putting up a missile base in Czechoslovakia and Poland to protect the European Union. So they said, we're going to send set up one in Kaliningrad for the Baltics. And now America says, we are going to defend those three Baltic nations. And he's making a deal with Chavez of Venezuela to set up a missile base to hit the United States of America. Sarkozy of France is begging both Russia and America to put it off till next June. Don't do it. The world is shaky. The world is really concerned. And of course, Jesus talked about wars and rumors of wars in Matthew 24, 7 and Mark 13, verses 7 and 8, and Luke 21, 9. And then the fourth horse has to do with pestilences, diseases. And I'm telling you, we've never had a time like this. Uh, AIDS, avian flu, a bubonic plague, dengue fever, hantavirus, Lyme disease, necrotizing fasciitis, and now MRSA and VERSA. And it's really shocking the doctors of what's going on. Why? Because the rider on the fourth horse of Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, takes one-fourth of the population of the world through all of these pestilences, all of these diseases, and most of them caused by the beasts of the earth, the beasts of the field. It's all here. Number one, the European Union. The second horse, Russia. The third horse, the black one, producing mass famine because of the finances of the world. And the fourth one, pestilences. Jesus is about to come, folks. He's about to come. Oh, I love that, don't you? With everything that the Bible said would happen, we're seeing it in the headlines right now. The four horsemen, we're seeing it in the headlines right now. Are you ready if the Lord should return today? He's coming soon, Jack. We need to be ready. Oh, I'll tell you, I want to calm down. The world is in a drastic situation. And you must get ready to meet the Lord. Prepare to meet thy God, Amos 4.12. And that's our Jesus when he returns. 
He died for you. He loves you. So pray this. Lord Jesus, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for taking that body with blood to shed it for me, to wash me and cleanse me from every sin I've ever committed. Lord Jesus, I trust in you and in your sacrifice on the cross. Today I receive you. Come into my heart and save me. Pray in your beautiful holy name. Amen. Amen. Don't you love that to wash me and to cleanse me? How good to know that when we receive the Lord as our Savior, He does cleanse us of anything in our lives. And now I want to say, if you prayed that prayer right to me this week, I'll send you absolutely free this little book with First Steps in a New Direction. There's the address. Please write. I'd love to send this to you to help you in your walk with the Lord. And now I want to direct you to our offer of the week, the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Beautiful leather. I'll enclose a gift box. It's not too early to start Christmas shopping. It's right around the corner. And I just want to say, please, they're flying out of here. So get your call in right away. Did today's program interest you? Well, everything you heard was built around eight verses in chapter six of the book of Revelation. We explain every verse, hundreds of them in Revelation, hundreds of them in Daniel, uh, 30, 40 hours of study, and then A to Z to prophecy, every prophetical term. And those three books are all in here now, originally selling for $60. You get it all for $59, plus the Bible with 10,385 quoted verses. I'll tell you, this is a real Christmas gift. Yes, it is. Something else in here, too. Everybody says, how did he memorize the Bible? Well, he has a reference in here as to how he memorized the Bible. Friends, do not put off making that call. There's the 100 number, there's the address. So you want it for your use or for a Christmas gift. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Ella, my friend. To order your Prophecy Bible, call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send 5995 to Jack Van Epi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send 5995 to Jack Van Epi Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA 6Y1. And ladies and gentlemen, the Jack Van Epi Prophecy Bible is internationally acclaimed. A must for you and yours. And it can be yours this Christmas. Make that call today. Rexella? Friends, there's the 800 number. There's the address. Don't put off. We want to get it in your home as soon as possible. They're flying out of here, so make the call right now. And let me just draw your attention to something. Go to the web, jvim.com. You can see this program again and also have some of the things uh, answered maybe that went by real quickly. Chat goes pretty fast, so jvim.com. Let me just say that I love this saying, and it means so much to my heart. I trust it will to you. People who follow the Lord will always lead others in the right direction. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.